Do you find that you're critical of others? I guess, yeah. No, not really. Yeah, sometimes, not really. No, I don't really do that. No. I guess I am, but I just keep it to myself. I don't really say it. I can be, sometimes. Yes, I, I'm extremely critical of others, and it's pretty much just because I'm really cynical and really, I've got an analytical mindset, and I'm always like really thinking things through and a lot. Sometimes, I don't know, it just happens. Brian, Brian here sometimes, he makes jokes that maybe are the greatest jokes at the look same at your time. Sure, God, this kid's the worst. So for example, I leave this guy, <laughs> and look at this, look at his hair. Oh my God. So you would consider yourself critical then? No, I'm not really critical. No, not really, because I just think about myself. So do you think you're critical of yourself? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, like, I like to judge myself on, I have I set goals for myself and uh, try to reach them, of course. Well, on a good way, I try and strive to be better, but that's about it. Sometimes. <laughs> Always. No, because like, I just go with everybody else, it don't matter. No, I'm not. I just do what I feel like doing, so I'm always happy. No. Sometimes. Yeah, I always like to push myself, I guess you can say. No, no I'm not. <laughs> I have a large ego and I think I'm pretty amazing, so I'm not critical for myself, no. Do you deal with a lot of criticism, Jack? Well, I guess you could say that because, you know, with parents and teachers always pushing me to do better, I guess there, there's some criticism that goes along with that. What about you? Right, right. I get it from my parents a lot. It really seems like it's every day. Almost everything I do, they can kind yeah. of criticize. <laughs> Although it can seem like some people are critical of everything or everyone, criticism itself isn't always bad. In fact, a little criticism can be healthy and can actually help us to grow. Coping with criticism, that's what we'll be talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Jack. And I'm Catherine. And, and this, this is, is Real Faith TV. TV. The teens we met at the beginning of the show had mixed responses as to whether they saw themselves as critical of others or not. And whether they tend to be critical of themselves. We'll hear from them again later in the show, and we'll also meet our studio guests. But first, let's meet our spotlight guest, Julie Robenheimer. Julie was Miss New Jersey 2005. Competing in beauty pageants, I'm sure she had to deal with a lot of criticism. Let's see what she has to say about criticism. <laughs> you definitely cope with a lot of criticisms and a lot of critiquing um, being in pageants, but it's all uh, just people's opinions and it's really just a matter of you representing your best self and sure people are going to help you and, and some people are going to say things that aren't going to help you, but um, the point is to kind of listen to it all and then decide what's going to be best for you. I'm very critical of myself. Uh, being an only child, I. Um, have tried to be as perfect for my parents as I possibly could. So I always wanted to get straight A's. I always wanted to be the best at whatever I did. Um, but as with most kids, I learned that I'm not perfect. <laughs> as much as I'd like to be, I'm not. And um, I've learned to accept that. You know, I may not be the best basketball player, but I'm really good at other things and, and that helps balance everything out. Um, criticism is, is sometimes hard to deal with, but because I was raised in a household that taught me to be positive about who I was and what I had to offer to the world, I've always taken criticism just as someone's opinion. And people are allowed to have opinions that differ. Uh, people are allowed to have opinions that may be completely opposite. Um, but in order to learn from those critiques and those criticisms is what I think is most important. It depends on, um, I guess, who it's coming from because if it's from someone that um, like a close friend or someone that you know that loves you and wants to, to see you succeed and wants to support you um, you certainly look at it differently than just a, a stranger who's you know saying they don't like your outfit that day. Criticism in my opinion can't let you get down on yourself and um, if you look at it in, in that way as just um, someone's opinion that's going to help you that's all you need. I agree that it can help to look at criticism as someone else's opinion. Yeah, definitely, because it's a, you know, if it's a mean criticism, you can kind of write it off thinking, well, you know, it's just one opinion. Let's meet our studio guests and find out how likely they are to be critical of others or themselves. With us today, we have Aiden, Jessica, Christina, Ijama, Anthony, and Phil. So how critical do you think you are of others? Well, uh, I'd have to say that you'd be lying if you, if you say that you never criticize anybody else. It, whether you think it to yourself or say it out loud, you're always critical of, of other people. Whether it's constructive criticism or you just, you know, you just don't like the way somebody does something. I'm pretty 
critical in my mind, uh, except for when I get like really caught up in the moment, like when I'm doing sports and stuff, then I can kind of voice my criticisms, <laughs> which doesn't always end well. But like, I find myself being especially critical of other people who like either play my position because I'd be like, oh, I can do that so much better, or like stuff like that. <laughs> The only time I'm really critical of people is uh, when they do something to like hurt another person. But if, like, like if somebody wears like I don't know, I guess like a goofy outfit, I won't, <laughs> I won't care. I mean, they can, it's fine. I know, like I myself, I don't really criticize people. You know, I'll be thinking something, but I, I never actually say it. You know, the the only time I'll actually criticize somebody is when it's kind of constructive criticism. You know, maybe we're working on a group project or. We're doing a sport, you know, and I may I have some I have some advice or something like that, but I don't really criticize. But I am critical of myself, you know. I've, I I criticize what I do a lot because I always want to be better than I am already. You know, are you guys critical of yourselves too? Oh my gosh, I think I'm really critical of myself because my parents have always set like really high standards for me. So I start setting high standards for myself, and I find myself getting really frustrated, like if I don't reach my goals. Yeah, I tend to be really critical of myself for some projects, like school-related stuff. I'll, I'll have these great ideas, and I really try to bring them out, except it, sometimes it's hard because my ideas aren't always the best. And I just get really critical of myself, like, why couldn't I have thought of something better, or why couldn't I do what I originally thought of? Just like small stuff like that, but it adds up. I'm pretty critical of myself because I'm doing homework or something. If I don't do it right the first time, or if I keep doing it and I fail, I start getting really frustrated. And I start thinking, why can't I do this? And it just gets really like hard for me like, because I'm like, why can't I do this? I could do everything else. Why is this so difficult? Yeah, um, I'm involved in a lot of school activities and sports, and I like try my best to keep my grades up and still be good at the same, same time. It's hard sometimes. Yeah, I'm an artist. You know, I, I like the cartoon. And uh, sometimes, sometimes I, I could get into like a rut, and I'll just keep drawing like bad picture after bad picture. And I've come to realize that it's because I keep, keep being critical of myself, saying like, you know, once you get into that mindset that you're in the gutter and you're not doing a good job, you can't, and you're not thinking optimistically, you just, you know, you're, you're thinking like, why can't I do better? And that's probably the reason that you're, you're, you're doing so poorly is because you, because you can't understand why, you know what I mean? I'm not very critical of myself because like, if I get too critical, then I start getting frustrated and I get in a bad mood, and then everyone else around me starts getting in a bad mood, and it's just <laughs> not fun. Yeah. It's not worth it. Yeah. Anthony, I like how you said like the criticism helps you do better, because I play field hockey, and it's so, so competitive. So it's really easy to get down on yourself, but when you kind of criticize your own actions and you're playing, that's when I think you really push to get better. The key to being able to cope with criticism is to accept and like yourself just as you are. Yeah, having a poor self-image makes it hard to avoid being critical of yourself. It can even lead you to be unfairly critical of others. Like Julie said, criticism is just someone's opinion. If you can listen to it with an open mind, then you can decide what part of the criticism is legitimate and how you might change or respond in some way. We are faced with criticism in all areas of our lives. Sometimes our parents are critical of the way we dress, the time we spend on the computer, or the grades we get in school. Our teachers, coaches, and especially our friends are critical. It comes from everywhere. The teenagers we met at the Seaside Heights Boardwalk had lots of different experiences with criticism. Let's find out what kind of criticism they've received and how they cope. Can you share a story or experience when you've had to cope with a lot of criticism? Uh, well, I was a freshman on varsity and uh, I got put down a lot, you know, because I was a younger, uh, younger person on the team. And uh, what it came down to is you have to really stay strong and, you know, learn through your experiences. So that's what I did. Just sports, basically, I guess. Um, just trying to get better. Yeah, when I was like, when I used to go to school and my other, where I used to live, I was like the only person like that of my kind. And like everybody else was like always like, not hanging out with me and everything. So I was just by myself. There's this one time in my computers class where two girls were being total brats and like talking about me in a stage whisper. And pretty much it's just like I rolled off it and I let it go. Yeah, it would have to be like my first year of high school as a freshman. I guess because I'm a male cheerleader, they supposedly think you're a, 
homosexual, but that's not really true. So like, I faced a lot of like name calling and stuff, but like, once they saw what I can do, they like, thought it was cool and stuff. I get criticized a lot, but you know, it's okay because it's all fun and games. I don't mind. Until it's someone right. gets hurt. Until someone gets hurt. It's all fun and games until someone gets hurt. Like when you go to school and you wear like an outfit that like no one really like, like likes or something and they'll like make fun of you and then like the next week or something like they'll have it. That bothers me so bad. Like There's really nothing I really have to deal with. Usually people might say something about the way I look, but I don't really care. Yes, because I'm a cheerleader and my coach is always like yelling at us and telling us what to do and like you want to get so mad inside because she keeps critiquing and critiquing over and over again. So like how do you handle when your coach gets mad at you like that? I, just, I try to just listen, just breathe, like count to ten or something, just don't get mad or cry or something, just cope with it. Can you guys relate to any of these experiences? Well, what the last girl said about her coach critiquing her a lot, I ride horses, and my coach is constantly finding things that I could do better. And I actually, I have to listen to her, because if I'm doing something wrong, it could be dangerous for me or the horse. But like, sometimes I do have to count to 10, because I'm, I've been riding more difficult horses lately, and my coach will tell me to do things that I don't think are possible, just based on the horse's temperament and the mood that I'm in. So like I just I count to ten and I try to do what she asks and I'm I've ended up the better for it actually. Yeah, it's like me with basketball. My coach is always telling me to do this and do that, but at the moment it seems like they're just bugging me, nagging me. But at the end, it's really for the better, for my good. I can totally agree with that. Like, have you ever seen the movie A League of Our Own? Well, okay. Well, it's about <laughs> um, girls softball, and there's like a part where the two sisters are going at it's like mule nag and my stepdad and I always do that because I always feel like he's constantly nagging me like the gentleman said because he's like one of my coaches so definitely yeah but you got to remember sometimes if it's like a coach or, or like in, in the movie like if it's your family they're really nagging you because they want you to do to do better they're because they really care about you if it's somebody who's you know like I said like a coach or your family and they're just trying to see you succeed in what you want to do I could relate to the girls that were talking about uh, people not liking your outfit because it sounds it sounds dumb and girly, but really, like it can take you can take real offense when someone says just looks at you. And I've been there where I wore something and people were just like, but then two weeks later you'll look around and kind of see someone wearing the exact same thing that you had on that people were questioning. So I think you know, at a certain extent, people can kind of challenge you if you do something different. Let's hear again from Julie Robenheimer, Miss New Jersey 2005. She'll share with us some of her own experiences and how she learned to handle being criticized. Well, I am not your typical pageant mold. I don't have long flowing hair and I'm not particularly that tall. Um, but it really stems from when I started in pageants and, and growing up. When I was six, um, I had uh, the only friends I had were the boys that lived on my street and there were six of them and just me and they were all older and one day I went to play with them and they told me they couldn't because I had cooties and I was devastated I went home crying and it was the first incident that I remember that my dad taught me to be a positive thinker and to believe in myself because I wanted to change everything about me I wanted to stop playing with my little ponies and play with transformers so that these boys would like me and he said Julie he says you just be you and one day those boys are gonna love you and I thought he was crazy and I'm still crying and upset because I had no friends now but it was a really important lesson for me to learn and I didn't understand it at the time but as I got older and as I learned more about who I was that I began to understand what he was telling me and so when I was nine and I went to my parents and I said that I wanted to compete in pageants, they were a little surprised because I wasn't your typical pageant girl. I have, I have ears that stick straight out, so I was always teased as a child. People called me Dumbo um, because of my ears. They called me ugly because I had a hole, a gap in between my front teeth. Um, you know, they just, for one reason or another, they could always find fault with me. But my parents had always taught me to believe in myself and to believe in my abilities to achieve great things. And so I had said, look, I, I want to do this. I think it'll be fun. I'll get to talk in front of people, which is something I loved to, to do. Uh, plus, I'd get to dress up and live out my princess fantasy. So I did it, and I was hooked. I absolutely loved it. But when I was 15, I won a pageant, and I was absent from school for about three weeks. And of course, everybody wanted to know where I was. And so when everybody found out, I, I was indeed 
harassed and, and teased and um, just, it was unmerciful almost. But um, because I had learned to love myself and to appreciate myself and to see myself as a unique person that wasn't like anybody else, then I realized that I could take this and it was just their words, it was just their opinions. But I had two choices, I could either listen to them or I could believe in myself. And I decided to believe in myself. Families are one of the greatest gifts in our lives. In families, we learn about life and about ourselves. It's great how Julie's family supported her and helped her to believe in herself. But no matter how prepared you are or how self-assured, constant criticism can be hard to bear. How do you respond to criticism? Well, one way you can actually respond to criticism is to take it for what it's worth. And if you think it's a worthwhile criticism, you can change whatever it was the person was criticizing you for. I blow it out of proportion. I get really mad when people criticize me. Like, even over the dumbest things. Like, my music teacher will be like, you're not hitting that note. And I'd be like, I am hitting that note. But I'm really not. So like, I, I know I have to look at criticism with an open mind because I don't like listening to people when they tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm definitely the same way. I'm not going to lie to you. I get mad. I'll kind of I'll be like, yeah, OK, OK, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right OK. You know, like, I, I don't know. I, get, I have to learn how to be more responsive to criticism. Yeah, me too. Um, like, I take criticism pretty hard. Like, if someone tells me like I'm doing something wrong, I'll get pretty like angry because I always think like I do things the right way the first time. And um, it to me, I found out recently I could draw, use it as a strength. And I most of what I do, I draw from criticism my strength. And like, if someone tells me no, you can't do something because I have such big goals, I'll go like, no, I'll prove to you I can't. And from that criticism, I'll draw all the strength I have in the me. Yeah, I'm really not, I guess I'm not used to getting that much criticism from other than my family, but they're the ones who, you know, are supposed to criticize you from the get-go. But when I do get criticism, I really internalize it. I don't really know how to deal with it. So is it, is it difficult to deal with all this criticism? If you get constructive criticism, it's usually from somebody you like, somebody you care about, it's, uh, somebody who's close to you. And whenever you get constructive criticism, it's always a good thing. So it's, that's never difficult to deal with. You, know, you just take that and you improve on yourself. But when it comes from somebody you don't know or somebody you're not very good friends with or somebody that you're not close to, it's really, it's like that when they tell it to you, you're like, who are you, who are you to say that? Like, it's none of your business. What are you talking about? So yeah, it, it can be difficult sometimes when, you're, uh, when you have somebody that's out of nowhere. Some criticism is hurtful and downright malicious. The critic is obviously being mean or really just doesn't care about you at all. But gentle criticism is usually given with the intention of being helpful. This kind of criticism can be constructive. It's all in the way it's delivered. Julie calls this constructive criticism feedback. Next, she talks about how it wasn't just her parents who helped her to cope with criticism, but how her relationship with God helped as well. I don't know that anybody's ever been upset by um, some constructive criticism that I've given them. It's entirely possible <laughs> um, because, you know, they might, may not feel so bad to you, but then they may go home and be like, man, she really didn't like my <laughs> outfit. Um, but um, I try and always, uh, when I approach people with, with, again, I don't call it criticism, I call it feedback. I, I present it to them in the light, like, look, I'm trying to help you and I'm trying to help you um, show yourself in the best light. And when you present it to them that way, it's kind of hard for them to react angrily about it. The fact is that everybody faces criticism whether you want to call it feedback or damaging news. Um, everybody faces criticism and it's important to realize it, that you're not the only one, that everybody is going through it, everybody has gone through it. And it's really just important for you to listen to what they have to say because even though you may not want to hear it, it might be really important for you to hear and then you can choose to do what you want with it because that's what it's all about, doing what's right for you. When someone tells you about someone before you meet them. Sometimes <laughs> you have, yeah, it, it is bad. Sometimes you have a preconceived notion as to who they are and how they're going to act. And sometimes they live up to that. But majority of the time, they don't. And it sometimes can be really difficult to get over that preconceived idea and really get to accept them and appreciate them for who they are instead of who someone told you they are. 
It's one thing to judge someone and have a judgment in your mind, and if you keep it to yourself, that's one thing. But to say it out loud and, and to kind of spread the fire, if you will, is another thing. And I think that that's something that Jesus teaches us not to do. You know, you know, if, if you haven't been through the same thing, then you don't know what they're experiencing. And it might be completely different from them to you. So it's really important to understand someone, where they're coming from, why they're upset, if they're upset, and, um, and take it from there. My faith has definitely helped me with that. I've always believed that God put me on this earth for a reason. And um, there's a Garth Brooks song, and it, it's, <laughs> it says, I thank God for unanswered prayers. And I remember, I still do it, you know, you pray for things and you pray for things because you want them, but they may not be what you're here to do. And sometimes these criticisms are just God's way of helping you get on the right path again. And, and um, it's, it's, it's difficult to hear, but sometimes that's what you need. And, and it's more important to realize that. And I think that that's what I have uh, with my family bringing me up to be a positive thinker and with my faith teaching me that God put me here for a reason. And then I have to fulfill that um, really helps me to accept criticism a lot easier. I like how she called constructive criticism feedback. Yeah, me too. Can you think of any time you have given someone feedback and received a negative reaction from them? Well, um, there's someone in my family, he, he kind of keeps to himself. He doesn't like to open up. And sometimes he gets into these problems. Whenever like me or someone else in my family go tries and gives him good advice, he will think like, "Yeah, right, like that'll work." When really, no matter how you put it, either way, that will work. And he just doesn't accept it as much, like he should. Uh, I, I play in a band with my brother, and he plays drums. I play guitar. And uh, whenever we have, you know, this is usually like, uh, you know, the, the occasional fight, and. Uh, Whenever I try to tell him, like, oh, maybe you should do it this way, or he tells me you should do it that way, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's mutual when we say, like, you know, you should do it a, a different way. You know, it's the same way with both of us. We both get mad at the other person, and uh, we probably shouldn't. We need to work on that. <laughs> what can we do to better deal with criticism? And can our faith help us cope? We asked the teens on the street if their faith ever helped them to cope with criticism. Let's check it out. So has your faith ever helped you cope with criticism? Yes. Think of God, he'll lead you in your way. I haven't really used faith to cope with that. With that. Um, I just try to realistically, uh, you know, see if they were criticizing me correctly or what I have to do to, if I was wrong, maybe uh, change my ways, you know? I guess, just knowing that I can believe in what's right and what I know is right. All the time, like sometimes I need help, so. Well, I actually just made confirmation, but yeah, I, religion comes first. I always pray that you know, things will be better or something if I have a problem. I, I quote John Lennon, I don't believe in Beatles. I believe in myself. That's my faith. And yes, that faith in itself has helped me cope with my problem. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Catholic, Roman Catholic, so uh, you believe you, whatever God puts you through, you'll, he'll, he'll get you through it, so that's what I believe. So what do you guys think? Have you found that your faith helped you to cope with criticism? And how? Well, yeah, because faith like, will help you decide what criticism to keep and think about and what to just like disregard. So like the moral standpoint. I agree with what Julie said about like God having put you here for a reason. Like Other people are just people. You, like, you can listen to their criticism, but their opinions don't matter as much as God says. Yeah, and God made you a certain way. You know, like you look the way you do and you act the way you do, and that's your personality, that's who you are. And, you know, it doesn't matter if someone doesn't like that because God made you that way. Yeah, um, at our school, uh, we have a program set up where um, it's peer mediation. It's like if somebody's feeling bad because they get criticized or something bad happened in their life, they can go to this peer mediation and uh, everyone else in the school kind of helps them turn to their faith and like resolve their problem. Yeah, like when I feel, when I receive criticism, I often like pray and ask God to tell me why I received it so I could better myself and try to fix that. Yeah, I also go to God when I'm frustrated about like someone criticizing me and it gives me patience so I can like know what to do and what not to do. Yeah, patience is actually really important for me too. I know most of my faith is just based on virtues and trying to live my life in specific ways. 
And patience is definitely one of those helping me, help me get through it. It isn't always easy to love ourselves, especially when the world tries to convince us that being less than perfect means we are somehow unlovable. But our faith tells us that this is a lie. Each one of us is unique, wonderfully and fearfully made by the master artist himself. And loved beyond all measure. Jesus said that we cannot really love another person or even love God if we do not love ourselves. And the fifth commandment reminds us that life is a precious gift and asks us to take care of ourselves and the people around us. Learning to accept and give constructive criticism is part of caring. It helps us to grow, to discover our talents, and to develop good friendships. How do you cope with criticism? We want to know. Contact us through our website. The address is www.realfaithtv.com. Or you can call us at 609-406-7402. And remember, the Lord is never very far away. When criticism becomes overwhelming, turn to God in prayer. In the scriptures, we are assured of God's help by the prophet Isaiah, who wrote, The Lord is the eternal God. He does not faint nor grow weary. And his knowledge is beyond scrutiny. Those that hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar with eagles' wings. They will run and not grow weary, walk and not grow faint. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.